as you can see, the, this is, uh, these are just some rendering, my finished renderings of this house that I, I did. And uh, I just added some entourage so you can see that I added some furnishings and uh, a rug and a table and uh, some of the lights, added some curtains. It's the same scene and it's, uh, it's rendered using the same process that, uh, that I showed you. And it's all uh, from the same SketchUp model and then brought into Max. Uh, and then we textured the way we, we've textured it in, uh, in Max. Uh, the only difference is uh, I did some post work in After Effects, and I'll show you how you can uh, take advantage of Adobe After Effects to get some of this, uh, th this quality rendering. So uh, these are just some examples of the same house that we did. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, After Effects, and we're going to start off with uh, a beauty pass, which is this is a scene from a different angle, uh, and it has the furniture in there. And this is the beauty pass, and uh, this is a patch pass, which uh, the owner originally wanted uh, a different color for the, the beams. And so I went ahead and rendered a different uh, patch for that. I'll show you how we can fix that. And then uh, I did a pass for uh, the carpet right here. And uh, this is the Z-depth pass, as well as this is the ambient occlusion pass. So let's go ahead and take these passes, and I'll show you how you can uh, apply them into After Effects. This is Adobe After Effects CS 5.5. And uh, much like Max, one of the first things I like to do is to change the appearance and make it as dark as possible, just so I can uh, get a better, more accurate view of what I'm looking at. So the appearance, we just changed that and made it look a little darker. So uh, let's go ahead and add our, all of our passes. And so I'm going to select all my passes and just drag them right here. And this right here, uh, these are all the different assets I have for my project. And these are all the different files that you're going to use. Uh, now, this right here is basically, uh, this is where you're going to add your, your layers. And you can think of After Effects, it's like Photoshop on steroids. So anything you can do in Photoshop, you can do in After Effects. And uh, you can keyframe it. Uh, and the reason I use After Effects is because it's, it's a, uh, I, I call it an unbroken workflow. So if I have a beauty pass and I've applied all these filters to it, if the designer comes back to me and says, hey, can you re-render that rendering? I don't have to go back and redo all those filters like I do in Photoshop. I can just do that beauty pass, uh, re-render it, and then swap that footage out from the original with the new one, and it's going to apply all those filters. It's going to keep all those filters that I have. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of a seamless workflow, and I can go back and forth, and it's really powerful. And so this is why I use After Effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this into my, these are my layers right here. And you can see it's going to add my beauty right here. And we can think of this as just like Photoshop, where we have our layers, and we can put our layers on top of each other. One of the first things I want to do is uh, add my ambient occlusion pass. Now, we did that in, uh, you can do that in Max with the A and D material, but you can also do it in Post. And the reason you want to do it in Post is it can give you control. In real time, you can get response on what that looks like. So right now, the ambient occlusion pass is right on top of the beauty pass. And uh, right now, we want to be able to see the ambient occlusion pass go through the beauty pass. And so to do that, we need to change the blending mode. So to do that, you, there's a switch down here. You can expand it right here. This is the second one right here. It's called expand or collapse, the transfer control panels. And this will show you the mode that, uh, that the layer is in. And much like Photoshop, you can change the blend mode. So to change the blend mode the way we want it, we want to change it to multiply. Now, what that's doing, let me explain what it's doing, is it's, it's basically saying that everything that's white is going to be transparent, and everything that's black is going to be opaque. So in this case, when we look at our occlusion pass, everything that's white, which isn't the shadow, is going to be transparent. And then the shadows we want to keep, and that's black. So that's what that blend mode is doing. So when we change it to multiply, it's actually keeping that. And let me show you how that's going to affect the rendering. So when we turn that off, there's the beauty pass. And with the ambient occlusion pass, you can see all of a sudden how much, uh, how much life and difference it adds. And in a sense, it almost it looks like it ad it's adding full, full on shadows and, uh, and details to your renderings. Now, it's not always that accurate, but it definitely, for a rendering, especially for uh, ArcViz purposes, it's very helpful. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can get a better view. And you can do that by hitting Control Plus. And now we're at 
and the space bar will pan, so you can pan around, and you can really get a sense of what that, uh, that pass is doing. So, so that's the occlusion pass. And I try to add that uh, as one of the first things before I, I start going through my different passes. Uh, so that's the occlusion pass. Now, the owner, he, he didn't want to keep these as wooden beams. He wanted them painted. So we have a patch, a render patch, and I'm going to stick that on top. And I'm actually going to stick it underneath the occlusion pass. And you can see it just rendered those beams as a, uh, as a painted color. And what's nice about the PNG is it inherits the transparency. And so if I turn this off, you can see all it is is the beam itself. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off, and I'll show you. Uh, we'll, we'll just keep it off, and we'll keep them wooden for now.